Today we're going to show you how to tie up a rig that I've been using really successfully this year since joining a new syndicate lake. Um, I wanted to try and bring something different to the table. Everyone was fishing with particles on the water and boily and uh, it's been predominantly particle dominated for a few years now. Um, we all know that venues that are particle dominated they do respond well to maggots so I wanted to give that a go. I started out early spring introducing lots of maggots. I wanted to add sort of a visual element to it as well so I I've come up with this rig and after lots of playing around I've got it right and you add the visual element with a small 12mm pop-up and tipped on the end there is a big bunch of wiggling maggots. I've had a lot of success using this rig now. I actually had a brace of 30 pounders on my first session up to 34 pound and it's caught me fish on nearly every trip I've used it since. I'm going to show you how to tie this rig now and hopefully you'll be able to take it away and implement it into your own fishing. So to start with, we're going to take around 7 inches of the Trickster Heavy. This one's the Camo Silt in 20 pounds. And we're going to attach a small Gardner Covert rig ring onto the end. That's so that we can attach our maggots once the rig's complete. So we're going to take the rig ring and just attach that to the end of the Trickster Heavy using a 5 turn blood knot. Nothing complicated, it's just to hold those maggots on the end so it's not got to take any pressure at all. So. Just attach that on. All you need to do then is just remove the tag end using a pair of braid scissors just to neaten the rig up. You should be left with a small rig ring on the end of the braided hook link now. Now we're going to attach our bait so that we can get the length of the hair set correctly once we come to attach the hook. So all I'm going to do is take a small 12mm pop-up, I'm going to attach that using a gate latch needle by hooking it onto the ring and then sliding the bait down over the ring so that the ring just sticks out the end of the bait like so. We're now ready to attach the second rig ring. This one's here this time, it's a large covert rig ring and it's there so that we can attach it onto the rig and turn it into a blowback rig. So we're going to attach that onto the line and secure it using an overhand knot. I like to fish with it quite tight up against the 12mm pop-up so that the bait's kept close to the hook. I think this helps with pop-up fishing where the fish are feeding. So we've attached that with one overhand knot. I'm now going to just do a second overhand knot just to secure it in place to stop it from sliding. It also means that the ring then sits straight off of the Trickster Heavy rather than being on a slight angle. So now we can attach our hook. We're going to use just a simple blood knot to attach a size 6 covert incisor. These are my favourite pattern of hooks for using with pop-ups. They've got a real nice long sharp point. And I've been using these for a little while now for all of my pop-up rigs. So we're just going to thread the end through the hook towards the eye and tie a simple knotless knot. Remembering to slide the ring over the point of the hook before we tie the knot. To tie the knot I always make sure the rig's in position. Should be sat just on the bend of the hook there. We're going to tie a knotless knot. Always making sure you go back through towards the point of the hook when you tie a knotless knot to make sure the rig's going to sit correctly. Line error there on one of my rods. And now the first part of the rig is complete. We're now going to move on to tie the Albright knot and attach that using the new trick link material from Gardner. This is the 20 pound version that I'm using today. So we're going to start by just removing a small section of that, around 10 inches in length. This material is really nice and supple. It's created for boom sections for hinge stiff rigs, but it works extremely well for the combi. So to tie the Albright knot, we start by making a loop at one end of the trick link material. We then take the tricks to heavy, thread it through the loop that we've just created and we want to make sure that our distance between the eye of the hook and the loop there is around 
the right size for how we want it at a finished rig because it's not going to vary much now so I like quite a nice short section so that you get the hinge right near the hook you then pinch that into place on the loop and you should have something like this in your hands to deal with now it's quite a complicated knot to tie but once you've mastered it it's very simple the easiest way I've found is to pinch the two ends of the loop together and then using my hands I just wrap around with the trickster heavy eight times around the two pieces of trick link so that's once twice three times four five six seven eight now we've gone up eight times just to help secure the knot we go back down four times once we've gone back down four times I can now let go at the loop end and the tag end of the trickster then goes back through that loop as well and by gently sliding the knot down towards the loop and pulling on both ends of the rig the knot's all going to tighten down and by using our peel and pull stripper tool we can now just hook onto that tighten everything up so it's ensuring that it's not going to slip during the fight with a fish also tighten down the tag ends we've now attached the two pieces of line that we're making our combi rig of together and all we need to do is just remove those tag ends now with the braid scissors again So we're nearly there with the rig now, we're going to add a section of heat shrink tube in. I'm using the small super shrink, the covert super shrink. Again, I'm using it in the weed green colour because of the venue I'm on today, it's very weedy. And I found that a real long, slow, progressive curve works extremely well with the size 6 in sizes. So I'm just going to measure it out to the length I want to ensure that it's right instead of guessing. And we're going to thread that down the trick link now and over the eye of the hook. So we've got the tube in on there, we're going to steam that once we finish tying the rig. What we're now going to do is just add a small blob of critical mass putty to the rig. That's going to help to counterbalance the weight of the pop-up so that the pop-up doesn't pop up the whole length of the rig. So we'll just take a small bit of the putty and we're just going to mould it around that knot there. It also hides the knot and makes the finished rig a lot neater. And just roll it around until we've got a small mouse drop in of putty around our rig. I always like to fish with uh, anti-tangle uh, sleeves as well just to help that kick out from the lead on the cast. So we're using the green again, see-through green anti-tangle sleeves in the covert range. So we're going to thread one of these onto the hook now before we tie the knot because it's a lot easier to slide back up afterwards. So we just thread that through can be a bit fiddly now we're going to set the length of the rig this will obviously vary depending on what you're fishing over but I found the fish are feeling quite finicky today so I've had to shorten it down slightly but I'm going for a finished rig of around seven inches in length so I'm going to tie a figure of eight loop knot now on the end to finish the rig off Tighten that down again, just moisten the knot and use the peel and pull stripper tool just to tighten that knot down really nice and tight. Then we're just going to cut off the excess and just thread the anti-tangle sleeve back up over the knot of the rig ready to attach to our quick lock swivel. All we need to do now is we're going to heat shrink our tubing down so that we can get the curve set correctly. 
We're also going to steam the length of trick link as it streams extremely straight once held over the steam of a kettle. Again, that's going to aid to kick out on the cast. And then all we need to do is attach our maggots so that we have a complete rig. So we're going to fire up the kettle and show you the next stage. Okay, so we've got the kettle boiling now. And to steam the tube in, I'm just going to lift the lid off the kettle. Um, I find that by dunking the tube in actually into the boiling water, you reduce the risk of burning the dynamas in the Trickster Heavy. Um, so just submerge it all the way into the water, give it a shake, it lets all the air that's trapped inside the tubing out. And then when you take it out, it's going to be nice and workable. And what we're looking to do is curve the tube in so that you end up with a real nice, slow, progressive curve once it's set and it's finished. Something that looks a little bit like that. You're basically trying to extend the shank of the hook and it's just really going to help to flip and send that hook home. I'm now going to just pop the lid back onto the kettle so that the steam's only coming out of the spout. And I'm going to just use my fingers to protect the dynamas in the Trickster Heavy. I'm just going to hold the trick link out now and just run the rig along the steam and it's going to mean that in a second this trick link is going to be absolutely perfectly straight. A little tip as well, if you hold your putty over the steam, being careful not to get any of the tricks over it, if you leave it to cool for a few minutes it's actually going to dry out. I'm just going to knock the kettle off now and the finished rig is really straight and you can see the curve that we're actually looking to get there. So we're going to pop the bait back on now and show you how to attach the maggots and finish the rig off. So we're going to reattach the pop-up onto the rig now. Do this just with the gate latch needle. I'm just going to hook it onto the rig ring, slide it down. Once it's on, just clean off any excess pop-up that's caught in the rig ring, as you're going to need that completely free in just a second to thread the maggots on. Next stage is to take a sewing needle and a piece of bait floss, thread on around 15 maggots, making sure that they're all bunched up nice and tightly. Just going to thread a couple more on. Then you're going to pass that onto the bait floss. Take the bait. Right, so what we're going to do is the bait floss now goes through the rig ring. I'm just going to secure it with a double overhand knot. It's important to do a couple of overhand knots using this rig or else the maggots where they wriggle around so much they will work themselves free and you'll end up with no maggots left on the end of your rig. So a couple of knots and then you can just trim off the excess. There's no need to go too tight on that for the same reason. And then all you need to do is just pull the pop up nice and tight up against the maggots and there's your finished rig. 